Welcome to another UNCG's Pedagogical Poetry Society video. I am Nuri. Today, I am going to talk about a kind of poetry that is considered as ancient as any recorded literature of the human civilization. This is a form of poetry that precedes prose in all literatures of the world. I am talking about lyric poem, a short subject. In this mini lecture, I'll try to take you through uh, a brief definition of lyric poetry and at the end of my video I'll also try to discuss how we can teach lyric poetry in a poetry classroom. The word lyric has been derived from the Latin lyricus and the Greek lyric lyricus, which means singing to the lyre. The Greeks defined a lyric as a song to be sung to the accompaniment of a lyre, a musical instrument that you can see on the screen. The instrument was used to accompany the singing of poetry during different festivals. But here uh, I'm going to discuss three key features of a lyric poem. Shortness. Generally, a lyric poem is short in nature, famous literary critic uh, Amis Abrahams, for example, defines lyric in his A Glossary of Literary Dams as a short poem consisting of the utterance of a single speaker who expresses a state of mind or a process of perception, thought, and feeling. Subjectivity, as I have already mentioned at the beginning, a lyric is a subjective poem. Written in the first person point of view, a lyric is always an expression of the mores and emotions of a poet. The best lyrics are emotional in tone. Every poet tries their best to give fan to their internal feelings and emotions and communicates with the readers through the means of a lyric. Musicality. Uh, the poets use various literary devices to enhance the music of their lyric poems. As the origin of the word lyric suggests, poetry was born from music long ago and to have influenced each other ever since. Modern song lyrics are just the most recent way that music and poetry have come together so when we talk about songs we talk about the lyrics to the song that is really closely related to the idea of a lyric poem modern lyric poems although usually not sung still possesses musical qualities well sometimes confusion arises while reading a lyric poem as who is really speaking in the poem is it a poet or the speaker a poetic persona. Although a lyric is written in the first person point of view, the I in the poem need not be the poet who wrote it. In some lyrics, the references to the known circumstances of the author's life make it clear that we are to read the poem as a personal expression. Even in such personal lyrics, uh, both the character and the utterance of the speaker are obviously invented to create a desired artistic effect. But regarding the classification of lyric poem, uh, lyric poetry encompasses a wide range of forms and approaches. Lyric poetry has also no prescribed forms. Sonnets, uh, villanelles, and pantoms all are considered lyric poem. So are elegies, odes, uh, and most occasional poems. Uh, but all of them have different formal patterns and different modes, and they call for separate treatments. Well, uh, some critics use three classifications uh, uh, for lyric poetry. Uh, lyric of vision. The lyric of vision has been called by Ezra Pound as idiograms. This is the most externalized kind of lyric uh, utilizing the pictorial element of a print to represent the object or concept treated in the context of the poem itself. The most recent practitioners of lyric of vision include Amy Lowell, uh, William Carlos Williams, E. Cummings, and the French Dadaist of 1920s. Uh, another uh, uh, class of lyric is the uh, lyric of thought or idea. The lyric of thought or idea is the most personal but still objective in tone. This type of lyrics may be expository or didactic 
and the expository lyric writers include Boileau, Dryden, Cooper, Schiller, T.S. Eliot, uh, etc. Uh, and the didactic lyrics include the allegorical, satiric, and vituperative uh, spaces. spaces. And uh, another class of lyric poetry is uh, lyric of emotion. The most subjective or internal strain of modern lyric poetry is the lyric of emotion. It is this lyrical type which has become synonymous with poetry. The lyric of emotion enjoys an unbroken continuity from the 16th century to the present time. It has been sustained in different forms by Shakespeare, John Donne, Collins, Baudelaire, Mallarmé, Dylan Thomas, etc. Well, uh, how to teach lyric poetry in a poetry classroom? In order to teach lyric poems, we can use almost the same methods and techniques that we use to teach poetry in general. Uh, the following are some steps that we can use to teach lyric poems in our class and also make our poetry instruction engaging. Well, sometimes students are intimidated by poetry. So using songs in a poetry classroom can help us ease them into poetry analysis that there is always really no difference between looking at the lyrics of a song and the lines of a poem. We can ask our students to bring a printed copy of the lyrics of their favorite songs to the class or we can select one, preferably a song that has uh, the elements of literature. Okay, then uh, uh, play the music or recitation of the poem at the start of the class. It will create an, an appropriate atmosphere in the classroom. Uh, then uh, you should read the poem uh, to the class. You should read uh, the poem slowly and clearly. Reading a poem slowly is the best way to ensure that the poem will be felt and understood by its listeners. Let the words of the poem do the work. You can also ask students to read the poem. Uh, a good poem will no more yield its full meaning on a single reading. So it is always a good technique to read the poem several times. The next step is to paraphrase the poem. Uh, while paraphrasing, you should explain if there are any unfamiliar words or hard to pronounce words in the poem. To read with conviction, a reader needs to know at least the dictionary sense of every word of a poem. Uh, at this stage, briefly introduce the various elements of a poem like subject matter, theme, tone, diction, figurative language, etc. Uh, you can uh, use handouts or slides to discuss these elements of poetry. Well, now you can move on to a deeper, more sophisticated understanding of the poem uh, through some in-class activities. Ask the students to focus on the poem and generate activities that will help students learn all important parts of poetry creation. You can introduce uh, individual or group activities on the following key aspects of uh, the poem. Uh, for example, uh, who is the speaker in the given poem? Uh, is there any identifiable audience for the speaker? Uh, what is the occasion uh, and the setting of the poem? Uh, what is the subject matter and, uh, and theme of the poem? What is the tone of the poem? And how is it achieved? Uh, what are the diction, imagery, figures of speech, and meter of the poem. Well, these are, are some of my suggestions uh, that you can apply to teach a lyric poem in a poetry classroom. I think uh, you will find these suggestions helpful. Thank you for watching.